Hi, how's it? In the name of Christ, how's it going? It's... you get got up on. Alright, I hope you're good, I hope you're peachy, I hope you're Stella, and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. It's the 16th of January 2024, and it's a strange day. Okay, right -o, so where do we commence? Caveats, had to put them out there. Beware the um, white cast sunscreen, it's gonna be a thing graying my brows number two beware the captions they're not always accurate they uh, sometimes use a small g for god or they are misspelled or there's just like some issues okay i don't have an editor and they're just gonna stay there i like them they're cute that's what i think thirdly i may or may not be wearing app makeup but it's more than likely that i am in which case Look out for it, it falls off my face. It does, it falls off my face and um, yeah, so just like, look out for that. Um, yeah, what else do I want to say? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a horrible, horrible, horrible time. It's a horrible, horrible, horrible day. Yo, that's like it. <sighs> Yo, is there tomorrow? Is there? I'm already sure. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that this is not it. Whatever it is. You know, I want the world to end, but at the same time, I don't. I want it to end, but I also don't want it to end because some people are addicted to dystopia. Like, there are people that have so debilitated their lives they have so shattered themselves, they have so obliterated their joy, that they don't deserve the end of dates. They deserve a happy society. There are people that just do not deserve it to be over. I apologize. The human race has been doing strange things for a minute. Did I put out there all of my caveats? Let me think, oh no, I forgot to blush my cheeks to show you that I'm human. That it might be clear to some who keep on poking and prodding away at me. They will stop because, ooh, look, when you prick her, she bleeds. Ooh, look, when you pinch her, she gets like fleshy cheeks. Ooh, no, look, when you slap her, she gets a blue eye. Ooh, no, look, when you ransack her, she actually can die. Therein lies the pink, and it's telling you, what are you doing? But it doesn't really matter that that's what's going on over here so in the show being mary jane mary jane gabrielle union whatever ends up married in the end of the very end she ends up married to the guy that once got her fired from her job like when you try to romanticize crap that's what you get the dude that nearly basically left you bankrupt on the side of the street scraping the pavement for leftover bubble gum that you're gonna chew on because there's nothing else to eat. The guy that, that almost landed you there. You are just embracing his marriage, if anything. That whole theme is literally splattered all over the entertainment industry. I don't like the entertainment industry. I despise them. And I don't even understand why they do what they do. Because at the very end of the day, what are you doing? You are human. Like you're literally your people. Women of the entertainment industry. It literally cannot be just about money. It just, it can't. It cannot be about your salary. Like at what point are you going to take a stand? Human individual, females. Like I'm out here communicating to some females. It cannot be enough that you get to become a millionaire because you are an actress. Can't be enough. When you are aware, because I mean, of course you're smart, why wouldn't you be? That there is like a whole protagonistic edge about the entertainment industry. It's literally trying to stand for causes, perpetually. You know, I can't even listen to Trevor Noah being interviewed. Anything he does. I want to put my, my like plugs in my ears. Earlier, my older sister was listening to some interview of Trevor Noah and I was in the kitchen making edibles I can't call it breakfast but I it was the first meal of the day because you know and that afternoon waking up person seeing as I sleep at 4 a.m. in the morning 
and I wanted to get out but I can't get out because I have to make my food and I can't cut corners with making my food because I need my nutrients so we're not gonna run out because somebody's busy listening to Trevor Noah I don't just like dislike Trevor Noah just because he's Trevor Noah or just because he's South African because I, I currently just don't like South Africans like I'm from here and I'm not feeling this place it's their basic and I don't really care what anybody thinks but that's not the only reason the reason why I'm not feeling them is because they've shattered me into like a whole million pieces it's raining outside just in case you're wondering so it's gonna be a little noisy look out for that I could not listen to him because of basically what under heaven it is that I feel attacked by every time I switch on the TV every time I turn on Netflix every time I see an advert on YouTube every time I watch people that are literally just trying to be to get through the day by acting like they're not offended or afflicted by a society that is headed in the absolutely wrong direction you cannot be that individualistic you literally in your monolithic mindset cannot anticipate that that monolith that is anything to get through the day chilling in your brain is sustainable on a collective in the human race where it is that we all together foster a future as a collective and so whatever it is that the collective is doing is likely going to be the end result of us all the entertainment industry is very unfortunately influential and you cannot hang out in the entertainment industry unless you are prepared to proliferate a particular agenda you can't have certain views or conservative principles chilling in your heart and expect to be an a-list celebrity you can dream on but this vessel is extremely influential and so if at all you've got a whole bunch of loony bin psychopath people in it happy to proliferate a stupid loony bin psychopathic ideology we are literally all screwed eventually like ultimately like in the long run maybe medium to long term if not immediate because this world is being flipped upside down on its head and made to vomit out all that which is good by influence through those that we imagine or anticipate in society as great guys or great girls there's just no being okay there's no staying to your guns if you're gonna be huge in the entertainment industry so whatever you truly hold to and whatever you deep down inside believe is absolutely irrelevant if you want to be a star it's entirely irrelevant if you want to be relevant mm. and upon being relevant you then get pontificated you get proliferated you feverishly grow in these streets you have got compost manure poured on you that you might thrive as a plant and then everybody looks at you everybody gazes at you everybody literally gawks at just you and if everybody is looking at just you and not everybody else that is sensible out here in these streets we have got a very disquieting general trend that is being proliferated that's absolutely narcissistic because it thoroughly imagines itself viable as a going concern in the future when it is apocalyptic when it's actually quite nihilistic when it destroys in the end and it's clear it's obvious it's like singularity it's obvious it's like literally in your face clear that this thing can't end well but you see the thing about such individual souls as these that dwell in these environments is that they think it's just them or they think oh come on it's just like a prick on a human body all they do is just you know one small little prick can't hurt nobody's dying and so because they imagine it just one little prick and nobody's dying they like continue in a, a, some funny little alleyway that is sending them to oblivion balibang or in just the ecosystem without actually messing with the whole planet they imagine that this whole thing is sustainable in the long run when it's just them like it's just my career it's my future it's my thing that i'm trying to do and anything to eat and so because you just want to gobble up one little sandwich you're prepared to proliferate an agenda do you understand what i'm saying that deep down inside somewhere in your core like somewhere deep down in your members like somewhere near your liver the way it's so deep down inside yeah you absolutely freaking disagree with like only when you are violently wealthy can you afford to finally then start to stand against the wicked but when you're just kind of 
entry level wealthy when you're just getting in when you're just starting to make your big fat chunky many millions or when you cannot afford to make one mistake because you're gonna get all these endorsements taken away from you you're gonna get all of these things taken away from you, and then next thing you're gonna find yourself just living in some like regular apartment in johannesburg when that's what you're facing you can't afford to say finally you know like unleashing a brassiere at the end of the day that your bra that your your breasts might hang yeah when 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 under heaven the only time that you can actually remove that bra so everything can hang and so relax and finally be who you've always been is when you're basically bordering on owning the earth it's when you're so wealthy that you can afford to like you know mess with a couple of people it's what happened with kanye west he tried because he imagined okay just looking at my life right now i've made so much money and if at all i lose it all or if i lose a whole bunch of support i'll still have a lot of money just not as much as i used to before and so he lost all of these endorsements by nike he lost all of these in, in, not nike king adidas who was out here sponsoring the guy that pulled away because of his sentiment concerning whatever it is that's going on out here in these streets and then he, his net worth over that particular year that he decided to come out of the closet plummeted by i think it was like a quarter like he lost a quarter if not nearly two quarters of his net worth or wealth or a third of his net wealth just plummeted in one year because the guy decided to let his breasts hang because he decided to let himself basically just come out with how he genuinely feels right now kanye west had gotten to the level that level of wealth and so he took a risk he took a chance only people who are bordering on running the earth like i said they basically own the planet can finally let let their breast hang if at all they're sober if at all somewhere from the very beginning of their lives they've deep down inside thought certain things but now nah, we gotta grow now nah, we gotta impress now nah, we gotta get ahead now nah, we gotta whatever at some point that whatever gets to a point where you're wagging your head because you realize that the industry that you work for is too influential for you to stay mum for you to keep quiet for you to do anything at all that is not antagonizing the obvious destruction of society elon musk is one such human being that practically owns like an eighth of the planet or something and so he's very honest he comes out every so often just blurting out all of these what are considered to be obscenities that everybody's like what are you saying but you see elon musk first of all apparently everybody needs him and secondly he's got so much money that if he loses like kanye wears like a third of his wealth really he'll be okay so he came out and basically confessed to the american population that you guys are dumb to think you can do away with christianity and not just fall apart as a society the guy is not saved we know that but he still nonetheless went and told the american population that y'all are dumb to think you can liberalize the whole planet and just run amok in your funny little strange far left agenda and not somehow decimate the us as we know it or even the world at large because if a society is being run by certain moral standards based on i guess a particular value set entrenched in christian to judeo ideals you cannot then imagine that you can you're gonna uproot that one day because it's too uh dogmatic or whatever and expect you as a society altogether to keep standing you are gonna cease to be as a people at least in the state that you're in right now all this comfort all this you know cush is why it is that you're pompous enough to imagine you can uproot your foundation and not crash and burn as an like a whole entire concern yeah then again like i said elon musk apparently everybody needs him frankly i believe he's the guy that enables the mark of the beast so yeah after the the us you know crashes and burns and breaks its teeth following breaking its nose it they'll he'll likely get scooped up by somebody in europe they're gonna take him and he's gonna go live there i've already made mention of the fact that elon musk is on his way to europe he's clearly going to end up in europe because of the fact that america is obviously crashing and burning but the observations that he is making and also voicing his opinion because he can he, you see, he can the thing is he can the thing is he can because like i said even if he loses a quarter of his wealth he's still elon musk a quarter of his wealth can feed some of our entire countries so really and truly he's gonna be okay but when you're just scraping in when you're just getting by when you're just entering through or when you have just made your first like 
20 million when under heaven you are living in this beautiful house but really if at all you're going to maintain your status in a particular environment you got to keep on being a particular way thinking a particular way if you're going to entrench yourself in an ecosystem that's going to let you be strong let you continue to be strong let you continue to grow but you're kind of not start maybe starting out but more than starting out like you've already established for yourself alliances and upon losing these alliances you could get blacklisted in the worst way when you still buying that skelem you will shut up and then say things that everybody that knows better remember remembers you from a different time will just wag their heads and be like you can't believe that you literally cannot be serious in what it is that you currently are standing for you literally can't like am i in some kind of an alternate universe with a space-time continuum that's put me in a lag that keeps on going back into some ancient archaic time or is this person completely changed from what they used to believe because they've been successfully won over for the other side is that what's going on or thirdly are they just getting through the day because i gotta eat and i gotta eat big i gotta eat well i gotta eat healthy i gotta be what it is that i am i'm not about to take in my stride a lack of success or falling i'm not gonna take in my stride a splat i'm not gonna take in my stride a nosedive and just die i won't take it because i'm gonna be the dude that left south africa looking awesome and then i'm gonna be the dude that ends up right back where it is that i started because i decided to take a stand i decided to do a different thing the bible says what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul i was a big fat fan of stacy dash when i was on the come up because i absolutely loved the movie clueless the movie clueless yes stacy dash was dion in it and i was a big fan and stacy dash was doing so well in those days i would have imagined that she would have been one of those black actresses who like taraji p henson or who like i don't know give me any black actress right now that it just grows through the entertainment industry as they get older they get given roles in older um uh, you know positions like now they go from being teenage girls in high schools and then they end up becoming mothers of children and then they end up being grandmothers or whatnot because they're growing with the industry i imagine that stacy dash would even, of course because like become that because she was so successful in the come up she was she was she did so well uh yeah exactly when she was on the cup plus on top of that she's like this exquisite beauty you get my point and then she disappeared she completely disappeared from the entertainment industry and i was like what happened to stacy dash like why isn't she being casted in shows why isn't she getting ahead in life why why is it so quiet i thought that maybe she just fizzled away or that nobody was interested anymore in her or that she in and of herself was not interested in the industry until i happened upon a youtube short like three days ago where she was being interviewed by some pastor in a church and i was like stacy dash is being interviewed by a pastor in a church like whoa what's going on did the chick get saved or what and then i find out that indeed that's exactly what happened early on in her career or just as it was about to ramp up she decided that she likes jesus and then wanted to be that in the entertainment industry just basically a whole conservative um christian however that has got a career in the entertainment in industry and they flat out told her with these kinds of beliefs that you've got right now you don't fit our agenda you don't fit what we're trying to do you just do not make any sense at all for what you're, we're trying to proliferate so you're gonna have to tweak it or act as if though you're tweaking it in other words pretend you don't believe what you believe we don't care what you believe you can believe it in private you can believe it in a corner but just make sure that when you come on set you don't believe it and Stacey Dash was like, if I deny the Lord before you guys, men, he's going to deny me before the father. So she was like, no, it's okay. And then what happened was that she got blacklisted. She got blacklisted. So the chick basically lost a career in the entertainment industry. That's why she disappeared. I came to discover that the chick got disappeared from the scene altogether because of the fact that she was like, I am not prepared to take that chance. I won't take that risk because I believe that book that every last one of you is trying to act as if though is a total myth i believe it i comprehensively believe it and so because i believe it i will not for the life of me uh take that chance because what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul 
so she lost her career in the entertainment industry i don't know what she does now um for herself i, I really don't know what in the world she's been doing i'm not keeping tabs uh, on it stacy dash is the same person who after kobe bryant passed away a couple of like weeks down the line from his death she was like snap i didn't even know he had died that's just how disconnected from the industry that woman is yet it is what it is that she started out as and people like stacy dash are rare they're few and far between they're the sore thumb they stick out and the decisions that they make people look at them and they say oh dom how in the world are you gonna throw all that away another one that low-key also threw all that away threw all the way really like let's just put that in inverted commas because it's not a throwing anything away was lauren hill like she's another one that had this like immensely successful album well prior to that she was with the fujis and then she had this immensely successful album that ought to have given us a number two and she just never came back again right uh, of course she released that acoustic uh album where it is that she was in uh, some kind of a studio bar place where she was singing about what it is that they endured her through but that was pretty much the end of the exorbitant prosperity of lauren hill that was the end of her a-list status she ended up just kind of underground musician and having a whole bunch of babies with some, like you know that life that she ended up living and now she is a legacy artist that everybody respects for what she did back then but actually be heavy today no dream on actually be umfi today lauren hill no dream on you will always be the legacy chick that released a pretty powerful album back in the day but you stayed back there because you decided that you're gonna get all religious on everybody and then claim that the entertainment industry is rotten to the core so they they basically cause a derel a, a dereliction of reputation for these people in order that in order to disincentivize anybody else at all from following in their path that is looking at their lives as well as other artists in the industry so if you are driven by nothing but prosperity if you're driven by nothing but i just need to get my uh daily bread in tomorrow if that's all that you're running on do you understand what i'm saying when that's all that you're running on and there is no other moral compass that is driving you that you truly believe there is no other conviction that you have if you believe that this is it yo for real if you believe that this is it like on this earth we are born we eat we talk we drink we defecate we go to bed and we do that and we get jobs and whatnot and we do that on a loop in a cycle for like give or take 70 to 80 years and then after that we die and it's like a flat line it's over like nothing goes on it's just all i'm gonna be doing edits in the background just in case you're wondering what it is that i'm looking up there and it's that yeah you imagine that everything is just this like flatlining thing when that's all you're running on you're gonna ultimately be you're gonna be found wanting because the invisible qualities of god are all over creation first and foremost according to romans 1 but if you don't want to listen if you don't want to heed my i guess what you imagine to be dogmatic view dogmatic view the bible um if the bible is not what you're interested in listening to like that woman from cnn that is out i don't care what you say about this verse i don't care what you say about this chapter in the bible i don't care it's your opinion yeah an american woman out here like mocking the very foundation of her country that made it possible for her to even have the job that she has and yet she is comprehensively disregarding the importance of it maintaining the fabric of their society to a point of mocking on national television on a news is was it was it cnn or whatever some woman like you would know who i'm talking about you're happy to go and mock that foundation that you had because now you thoroughly are banding together with a whole bunch of miscreants that thoroughly imagine they can uproot the foundations of a country and be okay like the day is literally going to arrive when that woman wishes if at all she does not die first that she had not so hated christianity that enough of her being on a multiplier and just magnifying in number in america ultimately caused the destruction of america she's going to wish that she had not added to the numbers because it's like they're building an army do you understand and that particular army is destroying the world never mind the country because at this point I'm dealing with a similar nihilism in my own nation it's the, 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 the examples i'm using might be american but frankly this is happening in my backyard otherwise i would not be going through all this rubbish i would not be this this waste essentially like kind of wasted blacklisted life being thrown away like just a waste of a human being 
that would not be happening if south africa did not have i guess the same issue like i said i can't deal i don't like this country and i frankly don't like quite a lot of south africans i'm like i just i'm disinterested in what they have to say or offer because for years i've tried to reach them and nothing is giving i don't even know on my on my channel daily if at all i'm not re first reaching my countrymen but then again the lord did say that a prophet has absolutely no honor in his own hometown so yeah i don't like south africa and i also don't like south africans and if at all they've got issues or bones to pick with that do you i do not care as you also have not cared about me for like literally a whole decade as you're busy wasting the living delights out of my life it is precisely because of the nihilism of my country that i low-key desire that we should stick around so that people can be put in their place because this nihilistic society that you have created that has no regard for the god that obviously built it like yeah it's obviously going to crash you and burn you and if at all we win this war in trying to recover the country to what it used to be if we win then those nihilistic buffoons stand to live the dystopia just by themselves while everybody else just gets recovered to what is better everybody else gets defibrillated back to normal while they then live in some little corner as these freaks that tried to destroy an entire country like you literally imagined that everybody is going to end up the menacing beast that you are that is super destructive of anything valuable in society and so almost literally ended all of our lives you literally almost brought on board the apocalypse in everybody's lives until everybody woke up and realized that no these creeps are whack and they cannot be taken seriously like no nah, somebody gotta stop this like circus an individual has got to archer in these streets put us like a dead break on this matter because absent of there being a cessation of hostilities against the thing that has kept us all buoyant in an ocean of water yeah absent of there being a cessation of hostilities against it ain't nobody gonna live nobody's gonna survive nobody's gonna thrive nobody is going to wake up in the morning and trust that everything is going to be all right everybody's gonna be in flight everybody's gonna be a fugitive everybody is going to wonder whether or not their children are going to be alive tomorrow everybody is going to be facing a basically e extinction if this thing does not stop like low-key thoroughly proper like i'm getting to a point i desperately long that there should be not so much a rapture yet but just a recovery to sense because then some people are going to shut up and those individuals that 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 imagine that this little dystopian nightmare is a go is 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 feasible to linger into the long run if they get put to, down in their place if they are made to sit down just blom relax because clearly you don't make sense standing talking doing anything at all even farting like just be extracted from the earth altogether once they are made to see that they will look so dumb and for so long and the rest of their lives are going to be so whack because they're going to be the freaky weirdo that literally tried to destroy society and they had this like funny mindset how can i describe it so there is this movie called the you guys know the purge uh franchise the purge franchise right though those that, that that movie that basically says that crime is legal one night a year or whatever yeah the purge franchise has got like a million sequels and one of the sequels is, is, is called the forever purge right and with the forever purge there are these people that even after i guess the alarm in the morning says the purge is over they still continue to purge and they end up destroying the u.s they end up decimating the u.s it's just anarchy crime all over the show everybody's dying and they're trying to extract foreigners out of the country saying these people are the ones taking our jobs etc what a what a fish paste yeah okay you would know what i'm talking about if at all you've seen the forever purge i'm done editing well not done but like i have to wait yeah you you will know what in the world it is that's going on there the end result of purging perpetually non-stop was essentially destruction of america like citizens that did not want to fight had to go to mexico canada surrounding nations because america was no longer the place where everyone was going to find safe haven they were now the ones that needed safe haven because people decided that they're going to do things their way their own way because they're frank sinatra they did it their way mm, yeah well at the end of the movie american citizens then took up arms and decided that they're gonna fight back against the forever purges to take their country back like when that level of insanity is brewing on the ground are there no people that then that decide that they're gonna stop hiding 
Is there nobody that makes a decision to Uti? I can't just hunker down. This is nonsense. And then decide to take their country back? Are there no are there no are there, are there no former cowards? That's what I'm getting at. People that used to hunker down, bury themselves, hide in basements, scrummage around in a corner and bite their fingernails, cause ooh, I can't afford to stand up for what is right, cause what if they come for me? Are there no such people who upon seeing so much dystopian tragedy in the country that they will then automatically just start growing like brave genes? Do they not exist? People who will then just suddenly decide to Okay, look, I'm scared. We get it. But like, if I don't do something, it's literally over for all of us. I would desire more at the, well, just today only for the better part of the time, I just want to go home. But for today, something in me desperately longs for restoration and not so much for the apocalypse, the end of all things. So those little m maggots that made a decision to forever purge in our countries will just be made to sit down because even the feeblest among the countrymen decided to take up arms because what are you doing? This is what we've always believed. Look at what we're doing to children like Papa. If at all your kids are not your motivation to do a better thing and nobody has a future anymore, humanity when all else fails, seeing as they can't have each other's backs has always done what is better when children now were in the firing line when the future was now in the firing line when there was nothing left to gawk into the eyes of which you're not concerned when kids were in the firing line that's when a, a lot of people were like okay so i don't really like garabo she's all 39 and cracked up and broken but what in the world and the heaven am i gonna do with a five-year-old child that is so unruly that they definitely don't have a future. What are you gonna do with that? Because that five-year-old is a byproduct of Trevor Noah. Like, y'all need to get that. That five-year-old is a byproduct of these lunatics in the entertainment industry that are so severely influential that they are making children monsters. Now, let's go back to why I have no interest in listening to Trevor Noah anymore. I used to be a big fan, like massive, when he was still in the country. He used to stand up against what is rubbish being done in this country. He used comedy in order to basically help us laugh at wicked politicians. And then he goes to the US and instead of being a protagonist against obviously something wicked, he is pushing a wicked ad ideal. I'm sorry, like South African politics is not as um, definitively segregated between the religious batch of conservatives versus liber liberals, the way that America is. And so Trevor Noah did not really have to take a side, now did he? Between Christian Judeo principles of a nation that run its core and its foundation versus just do what thy wilt for this is the whole of the law, swinging on a chandelier like Sia and just barbarically doing whatever you want in a country and seeing if at all maybe that's not going to do anything better. Like, I often wonder if the guy doesn't have a culture shock. The level of insanity in the US is astronomical and Trevor Noah is a political activist in favor of the crazy left. Something that he in this nation, which is very frankly never have been. He supports a circus and he knows that he's supporting a circus because he's smarter than that. He is literally too smart to not know that he's supporting a circus, but that circus has made his pockets heavy. And that circus has given him clout even above many South Africans. That circus has made out of him the top 1%. That little circus has made out of him a rare, wealthy person that everybody in the world knows. It's made him famous. More even than what he was when he was in this country. He is world famous. He is known in ways that he never would have been known if he had stayed here in South Africa. That circus, however, he gauges it rightly as a circus. It is obvious to me. Yet he is trying to act like he doesn't see that it's a circus. He's trying to pretend, and you see, that's the thing. So he wants to keep his pockets heavy, or at least he doesn't want to be the, the next Lauren Hill. He does not want to be the next Stacey Dash. He does not want to be the next blacklisted human being. So he has basically signed um, his soul to the devil, a contract in blood or whatever, to go against his own convictions, to disagree with his own heart cry, because he's nihilistic. Believing just like the rest of us, the rest of this world, that we are born to eat and drink and poop and uh, urinate and then sleep and vomit and, and get drunk and work jobs and then just die at like 70 to 80 after doing all that on a loop. And then it's just over. And seeing as it's just over when everybody dies, I am not about to be poor because I stood up against rubbish that I could tell was rubbish. I need to go and grab this earth and run with it and enter into the sunset with this planet. And if at all, I'm not going to be wealthy here. What is there for me? What, what do I have? 
like what exactly do i have come on no i need to understand if i do not war as i ought war now for the wickedness if i decide to defect from that which cooed me from that which scooped me up from from where it is that i could at least maintain a sober mindset if under heaven i do not stand with them what's gonna happen like what else is there guys i'm making money never mind making money i am regarded i am exceptionally famous and on top of that everybody likes me what more is there to do on earth other than get all that praise from man you see that kind of stuff makes me wince because that's how the world thinks that's how the planet thinks i couldn't even listen to his interview because he has literally sold out and i know that i know that i know deep down inside whether or not it's ever come out oozing like pus from him that the guy is thoroughly aware of his severity of compromise and yet he's telling himself what can i do it is what it is i'm brushing shoulders with entire presidents of countries like there's no way that i'm gonna throw all this away in favor of those that we are lambasting with our rhetoric we are destroying the world we are hurting the mar we are marginalizing people who are still sound in the way they think we are treating people who are right in the things that they're saying like they're nothing we're making them second class citizens we are influencing the world to hate them too we're hurting the last of the human race of sober people but it's just me it's just me i'm one guy with this dumb mindset i hope one day in the future some child is gonna do better than me i don't have time to be a protagonist because what else is there here on earth other than the acquisition of all of this success what else exists other than all that glory acquired for myself and the praise of man we live and then we die and we have one such life only so let somebody else be brave let somebody else stand up against the system and let somebody else be prepared to eat bread and water only in order to basically proliferate that agenda to speak on the on the rooftops i i implore them to go to carry on because if at all they don't carry on i know as trevor noah that the world is screwed i'm aware the world is screwed if people like me get what they want i'm, I'm literally aware of it so i'm just going to leave it to garabo i'm gonna leave it to john pita and pinky i'm just gonna leave it to cassandra to be the only ones out here being like do you even see what's going on it's not that they don't see and it's not that they don't care either it's that they don't want to have to starve to get the message across and they also don't want to have to be an, a, a lauren hill or a stacy dash they keep making examples out of these people that human beings that you can tell you know that you know that you know that you know that you know deep down inside uh -uh, they would never stand for something like that but it's made them hefty it's made them heavy do you understand and upon being as heavy as heavy as you are but not heavy enough it's up to you if you want to toss up a coin in the sky and take a chance with whatever wealth you have right now and then find yourself back in mediocrity with people completely forgetting you i mean like i told you guys stacy dash was one of my favorite actresses and she just disappeared off the market altogether and for years i didn't think about her until i saw that short on youtube so she indeed they get forgotten they are what is called forgettable Lauren Hill, for very many years, you would also forget about her. Because the chick disappeared and, I mean, the youth of today don't even know who she was. How would say? That's what's good. So they make people forgettable, except the thing is, you see, it's, it's a nihilistic mindset to imagine that they're forgettable. Because this earth is this, like, interval, this brevity, this, like, point in eternity that has a beginning and an end. And that beginning and end is even long in comparison to the individual lives inside it. We are but specks of dust in an entire universe that has been created by an eternal God. That has been around, no one ever created him. And he put us here on earth to audition for a real life. To audition for eternal life. And whatever you do hear, every idle word that you've spoken out of your mouth, you are going to have to account for it at the great white throne judgment. But you see, they don't believe that. They don't believe that. This here is a brevity. Like the glory of the past, as it is written in God's word, is the life of a man. Here today, gone tomorrow, poof. Here today, gone tomorrow, poof. And these nihilistic human beings that imagine all we do is just get born, to pee, poop, fart, do all different kinds of weird things, trying to make money, and then die, hopefully at an old age. They imagine that that whole, that interval is all there is, and so they're juicing the planet, and going against their consciences 
If you don't want to listen to the Bible, you don't have to. Just listen to the brokenness of your heart. That is a conscience. When you make an observation as to what your decisions and the things you say and the things you now stand for and support are doing to other people in, a, other, in another location on the planet, in another geographical location on the planet, your decisions are, ca are causally related to that person's outcomes. And you know it. You know that the world is literally trying to extinguish Christianity. Like you're aware that this the side that you stand for is trying to humiliate the very God who created us. And you were raised in a Christian household. Have parents that are still or a mother that is still Christian. And you are standing against what it is that your own mother raised you to be. Basically throwing it in her face that she ever took you to church. Knowing that your niche, your, el your elite group is actively targeting people like your mom, like your mother. I mean, only look at what Katy Perry ended up doing to her parents. She converted them to the darkness. They started out standing against her wickedness in the industry. And now the mom and the dad cannot help but salivate after the daughter's prosperity. So if you can't reel your parents in that raised you better, you then cause them to be abandoned and spat on and mistreated by an industry that is standing for the enemy of your mother the enemy of your mother's god you, you are standing with people that basically had nothing to do with how it is that you got to where you got enough for them to see you in life at the expense of the person that got you to the point that where that, that basically enabled you to be seen in life like your own roots, your foundations, and you are walking away from all that, literally imaginative, that you turned out as apparently all right as you did by, by a magic wand. Like it was just a magic wand that was being swung in the sky that caused you to miraculously be fit for purpose for the entertainment industry in Hollywood. I couldn't listen to him interview because he has fallen from grace and he will only go deeper and deeper in that miry pit if he does not break away from that industry and it's highly unlikely that he's going to. He will continue to grow from strength to strength insofar as he maintains a rhetoric but he becomes more and more rotten over the years, doesn't he? And upon him becoming more and more rotten over the years then he ends up in turn hurting, breaking the heart, offending if you want to call it that, a person that once upon a time stood very nearly and dearly with him. A person that was once upon a time a big fan. Like a person that once upon a time could do nothing but sing such praises as those. He's ditched some people and he's made an enemy out of his initial support structure. He's made an enemy out of people that used to love him. Because now you're standing for obvious rubbish. The body of Christ across the world is being afflicted by people who are convicted that this is not sustainable but they can't say a word. Unlike Elon Musk, who can vo vocalize to America that, nah, you guys are naive to think you can uproot the foundations of your country and not fall apart altogether. But that's only because he's, like I said, Elon Musk. Trevor Noah cannot do that without ending up like Lauren Hill. He cannot do that without ending up like Stacey Dash. And so it appears that these individuals that in their little unitary mindset, that are telling themselves, it's either me or, sorry, it's either them or me. They're telling themselves it's either them or me. It's such individuals as these that have given brazenness and bravado that have caused, indirectly or directly, the level of entitlement by some pretty licentious men to anticipate that it's only a matter of time before I ultimately capitulate to them. I am severely afflicted by some very disgusting men one of whom is sitting in the USA and they keep on going back to the drawing board slapping me with sorcery because apparently what I stand for is old it's 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 like a denim that you have mistakenly poured bleach on it's patchy it's stained and frankly worthless the only good thing that you can use it for now is to clean the kitchen so seeing as that's what your faith truly is, Garabo. Just take what I give you. And the only reason why they will feel that, they feel all, they all feel that entitled to me is because some of the biggest people on the planet, some of the most influential voices in the earth have made them believe that Christianity is dead, Christianity is dying, 
the foundations that we stood on, the Christian, the Christian, the Christian Judeo principles that we stood on as a nation were mistaken. We believed in a myth. And so for those reasons, God was seeing as you are in a myth, there's no end coming. This like book that is the book of revelation that you keep on claiming is about to unfold on the earth. It's not happening. Look at your life. Look at how everything is so falling apart in it. How can there be a God when your life is like this? I do not know how many times I can explain this. The Lord works with providence. And not only that, he makes it clear that if they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. If they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. The Lord does not insist that people stay in an environment that is persecuting. And the reason why that is the case is because the Lord never intended for us to basically be like these magical beings in any ecosystem that if at all people encounter us just by mere virtue of being there just our own just our presence is enough to ward them off human beings are not demons that's what you must understand people are unlike demons and so in the name of jesus you cannot just tell a bugger to get the step in and it'll just go human beings are not entities they are sentient beings that are still alive that stand a chance at redemption and so they still have their free will and with them being given an opportunity to either choose good or evil death and curses blessings and curses therefore choose life with them being given that fork to opt between the two directions of they can choose wickedness and so as christians we are also not like a tsunami when we walk into a room wiping away everything at the beach toppling buildings and drowning some people we are influential unto christ however should they choose not to love the god that we come with free willed sentient living beings that have an option to choose life or death can choose death and so they can choose to persecute us unlike entities we cannot merely tell human beings get out in the name of jesus leave me alone in christ's name and them actually leave in fact the lord says you believe you do nothing special demons believe that jesus christ is lord and they tremble something that people just don't do so essentially entities or demons fallen spirits fallen angels are more pious than human beings because they have more reverence for the name of jesus his blood and his power and are more warded off by him than human beings ever can be we presently take for granted the grace of god and we presently take advantage the the um, magnanimity of god his potential or ability to forgive we take that for granted because we have over and over and over again lived lives that are so passionately sinful against god that we take for granted that ain't no ju judgment coming the world would not graduate to the point that it got in its wickedness if at all the lord god almighty made us as human beings the way that a tsunami would be at a beach just wiping out everything in sight because we're holy and you're not no one would get born again if true christians could just mere by mere virtue of emitting the holy spirit just knock out unbelievers no one would get saved people gotta choose him people have got to make a decision to do differently by their fellow man and if they don't make that decision their judgment is not always immediate it is written in god's word that he is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, not willing that anybody should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All should come to a knowledge of him. The Lord is long suffering. He is forbearing of the human condition. He understands we have been born dead in trespasses and sins and instances that our parents for, uh, conceive us. He knows our God that we are made of dust. And so he has compassion on us. Granted that these things are a reality in the sake, in the sight of God. He therefore awards with a great deal of grace magnanimity is in operation there to everyone that is a menace in an ecosystem everybody that is the bane of society's existence he forbears them he suffers them long and when you're busy suffering evil long not only does he suffer them long he also implores his christians to suffer them long he says you must always endure evil patiently the reason why god does all that is that people might repent and when they don't they do not always immediately just get blown out the way the way that you would blow out an entity when you're heavily fasted and you're prayerful demons just scatter they flee human beings however do not always scatter just flee from a prayerful environment it is no wonder entities drive people 
into environments where they're going to persecute Christians because those entities know that they cannot do certain things because they're given a demarcation. You will do this much and not much further. You can influence this person to do that and not that. And so causation of persecution by entities in the bodies of unbelievers is not necessarily eradicated by a christian merely like casting all that nonsense out in the name of christ because while we can cast demons out we cannot cast out the human heart that is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked the fact that we are born dead in trespasses and sins and instance did our parents conceive us the fact that it is over before it started that our most righteous works are like filthy rags that we can't choose god unless he draws us to the to the sun that there is nothing good in us there is no one who does good no not one for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god that people can choose to make of themselves vessels of dishonorable use instead of vessels of honor and so therefore offend god and also offending god therefore obviously persecute the body of christ understand if the holy spirit dwelling in us had the same power over human beings there would not have been those massacrings in nigeria recently got new year's eve got christmas eve sword because the holy spirit dwelling in those christians in those villages would have just created like an iron dome around those villages basically intercepting the missiles coming in through islamic extremists trying coming in to massacre butcher christians as they sleep in their beds at night christian persecution would effectively not not even happen on the earth if we were like mutants with warding off powers against even human beings we've got warding off powers against spirits but not human beings and it is the power of inf influence basically deciding to embrace the gospel because some someone gave it to you faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god that is what it is that causes people to decide no nah, i'm not going to do this anymore and so we pray for your redemption we pray for you to do a better thing hoping that the holy spirit will convict you to do a better thing but you can grieve the holy spirit even from without you by despite him convicting you of sin deciding to just flat out ignore him and then putting a live round in the head of a christian anyway and so when you kill a, a christian you cannot then sit around and think oh snap because i prospered to make them dead it must mean that their god is not because i succeeded to make them r.i.p it must therefore mean that there is no jesus and it's, for me it's like where under heaven in the scriptures have you ever seen people get thrown out of an ecosystem purely because a christian walked in the lord god almighty in this on high in the sky he has always been the only one according to biblical accounts he's always been the only one that was able to just drop people dead because they disrespected the living daylights out of him like elihu and whatnot those kids of eli that decided to burn some strange fire got killed by god in the temple of the lord and played around the ark of the covenant and all that jazz the lord is the one that decided to strike them dead only god has power to just blow you down to the ground because we're bora for the day but we can't do that because if we could do that understand nobody would get saved we have righteous indignation as christians we get angry too we also want revenge ever so immediately our desires sometimes are that you might drop dead because how long are you going to keep on whipping me if at all based on our desires people just automatically drop dead i would have already killed by now my ex-boyfriend i would have already killed by now that buffoon in america i would have already neutralized my former best friend cousin she'd be dead if at all my desires were to be fulfilled because i've got the holy spirit emanating out of me but they're still walking these streets hopping up and down like kangaroos why because the lord has given them blessings and curses life and death therefore choose life so given that people are not demons and we can't just cast them out it means that those who choose to ignore god and be like the world typical who hates disciples they can choose to throw us out the synagogues they can choose to kill us put us to death they can choose to put us in prison they can choose to trample us underfoot and so the lord rather counsels us instead of saying be like a mutant in a superhero movie and impend those who are coming against you because they will just drop like dominoes instead of god telling us that what does he say if they persecute you in one town flee to the next because he knows that people are not demons you can't just cast them out you can't just tell them get behind me satan and they actually get behind you people are not entities they're human they're still alive they've got free will they're not yet condemned even though upon rejecting christ they're condemned already they can still embrace eternal life and so they've got choices to either do that or the other 
And frankly, according to the scriptures, the majority of the human race chooses the other. The road is narrow that leads to life and few people find it. And so most people are frankly going to be on the broad road that leads to death. And that broad road conglomerate can be very excruciatingly abusive to the body of Christ. And that abuse is not evidence of God's absence. It is rather evidence of his presence. It confirms that we belong to him. He told us these things that is written in his word that we might believe. From now on, a man's enemies is going to be members of their own households. People are going to throw you out the synagogues and the day is going to come when those who persecute you are doing so thinking they're doing a service to God. So the Lord tells us just run, skedaddle. If it gets hot in a kitchen, literally get out. If a kitchen gets hot, get out. The Lord does not insist that we put ourselves in harm's way. Unfortunately, however, some Christians across the world cannot get out of harm's way. They're stranded in harm's way. They are sitting in the underground church in China. They are sitting in death camps and prison camps in North Korea. They're sitting in prisons in Iran. They're sitting in unemployment and excruciatingly disregarded, completely ignored by her countrymen in South Africa at the backs of their mother's houses in shacks. We can't flee. There are believers in the world that cannot flee. It is written in God's word that if it is possible, live at peace with everybody. The reason why the Lord said if it is possible is because sometimes it's just gonna be flat out impossible to do that. So if at all we had power to just foster peace because blessed are we when we foster peace because we're the sons of God, we will be confirmed as the sons of God. If it was possible for us to just like that, almost like waving a magic wand, foster peace, I would not be in this situation. I have tried to possibly live at peace with my countrymen and failed abysmally. Sometimes people are so recalcitrant and rebellious to the gospel that they very frankly, very simply will not take him when he says, I'm here for you to take. Embrace my propitiation. Allow yourself to be cleansed. Let yourself be washed from all the grime on your body. Let me put a new heart in you and renew a right spirit within. Let me clean you with hyssop. Let me make you clean that you may indeed call yourself my disciple. Allow me to put oil in your lamp. Let me do that. And some people are like, no, it's okay. No, really, it's okay. It's fine. I got this. Like, really, like, you know, Frank Sinatra, you'll do it your way. Like Frank Sinatra, they tell themselves they'll do it their way. And so they reject the gospel. And when they reject the gospel, the Lord gives us direction to dust our feet off. He tells us to leave that town. It'll be a better day on the day of judgment for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and for Sidon and Tyre than it will be for Bethsaida and Chorazan. Because they rejected the gospel when it was given them. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But that faith is an absolute choice. That upon being given conviction by the Holy Spirit to repent, you may or may not choose to go with it, to run with it. The Lord is the one that draws you to hear the word. Many are called, but few are chosen. A lot of people who get called make a decision to just walk away from God anyway. And so that's why so much tumult is slapping me as a Christian in this country. I've got power in Christ, but it does not matter to them because however many times I perform a miracle on Mount Carmel, they're disinterested. The Lord has given them blessings and curses, life and death, therefore choose life and they've chosen death. And because they've chosen death and I can't flee from my country because I've been imprisoned in it, it appears I'm facing martyrdom, aren't I? It appears I'm facing death, aren't I? It appears I'm gonna be killed, aren't I? Not because the Lord does not care to take care of me, but because the Lord has given people an option and a choice to love me, but they've chosen not to. People have been told by the Lord, God, I was in trouble. Go and rescue her, snatch her out from that dingy dungeon that she is in. Help her escape that menacing monster in America that she keeps on lamenting on a rooftop. He is a recalcitrant buffoon, spinning on the spot in Karakitopo, unwilling to listen to the scriptures. The woman is in danger. Please go rescue my daughter i have sent you to her, to her ministry for that very purpose as that snatch my child out from that and they've said uh no it's okay i'll pass they get to whether or not it condemns them bottom line is they get to because the lord does not by coercion talk, cause anybody to love him he is a loving pursuer of the souls of men he does not bring anybody into an arranged marriage do you understand and so because that's how god is a lot of y'all have been given a chance to do better where I'm concerned. The Lord has spoken volumes to you. He has convicted you richly of what you ought to do where I am concerned. And yet you've chosen not to do anything that is seemly where I am concerned. So for those reasons, I appear to have no God charging anyone for me. I appear to have nobody looking out for me when it is South Africans that have seen it fit to bewitch me into oblivion, keep on trapping me in sorcery. They keep on throwing spells at me instead of enablement. They keep on harassing the living daylights out of me instead of caressing me. They continue to do that which is wicked because that's what they get to do if they want to. Because God is not coercive like that.
So you wonder why it is that I've been abandoned like this? It's because you have allowed yourself to be influenced by men like Trevor Noah. By people who have basically said there is no such thing as Christianity. And despite your conscience speaking volumes to you and the Holy Spirit who is from without you convicting you of such sin as that, you are choosing to run with what you imagine there is no God. How in the world under heaven is there supposed to be a God affecting anything when there is no faith in such an environment as that it is written in God's word that a prophet has no honor in his own hometown. And so God could not do what in his own hometown? Jesus, when he was walking these streets, could not do what in his own Nazareth? He could not perform miracles. Why? Because people did not believe. So you wonder why I'm not being out here a miraculous person walking on water in South Africa? It's because I'm in Nazareth. It's because I'm in Nazareth. I'm suffering as I'm suffering because my countrymen don't believe. And when you don't believe, the lack of miracles in your environment is your fault. It is not the fault of the one who is the miracle maker. I have been walking on Mount Carmel miracle type activity for 10 years. And South Africans have been like, where's your God? Where's your God? Why don't you have a job? Herein lies the better question. Why have you been in a position to hire me and chose not to contact me? Why have you been in a position to hurl me? Like literally, what is this? Grab me out of this, harness me out of a ditch when you could have done that and you chose not to. The problem is you. You are the ones that made it look as if there is no God because God sent you and you said no thank you. Look at what happened with Jonah. Jonah decided to go to Tarshish, run away, doesn't want to say what he did or what he want to preach to Nineveh. The Lord swallowed him in a fishy, vomited him out and then he went and preached to Nineveh. Long story short, Jonah said no. He said no to God. The Lord of course made him ultimately preach to Nineveh but he said no and that is the bottom line. Jonah said no. So you said no, just like Jonah. But then what does God do when you say no? And his servants are facing basically a extinction. He will go on right ahead and swallow you whole, will he not? He will swallow you whole. Look at what has happened to South Africa. It's fallen apart because you keep saying no to God. You keep on taking your chances. You keep on telling yourself, Zuti, you will basically grab this opportunity and run with it because somebody else is going to do it. Trevor Noah is sitting in America right now telling himself that somebody else is going to stand up against the entertainment industry. It's always the belief that somebody else is going to do it that causes a mushrooming, a burgeoning of so many people that have decided to remain stagnant that ultimately in a country, there is now an entire forever purge. People are purging. Everybody's telling themselves somebody else is going to save Karabo. Until the woman ends up getting massacred, murdered by some pestilent, rabid dog living in a country whose entertainment industry is massacring the body of Christ. And he is living in a state that set him free out of prison to go and do whatever he wants on this earth. And nobody is doing anything about that. And so Karabo is dying because South Africans are exactly like Trevor Noah. You're sitting around in conviction and doing nothing. And you expect that the earth that you, as you know, it is going to be maintained. The foundations that you grew up in are going to be maintained. You anticipate that you're going to be all right tomorrow, despite being this incredibly incendiary against the body of Christ. You cannot survive. You can't. And I've got a very strong longing that people should repent rather than us go home. So all of these dystopian freaks that are thoroughly thinking they can uproot Christianity will ultimately be met with comeuppance. That they will live in a world that is restored and, and end up just fizzling away. Essentially, I desire for the day when men like Trevor Noah will end up being the Lauren Hills and not the other way around. The day when the people who decided to stand for what is right become the ones that ultimately get heralded in society. But we all know it doesn't end like that now, do we? We all know that the ending is rather dystopian. It is rather the good that are called evil and the evil that are called good. And so we are gonna be subjugated to the tyranny of people like Trevor Noah all the way up until the rapture because all of y'all chose the darkness instead of the light. Let's move to the next part.